Hello and welcome to Gadgets and Gizmos. My name is Gaurav Preeti. Nothing in the name but a lot in the show. So, shall we go? On the show this week, get paid for your waste. Samsung launches the new Note 7. And meet Cosmo, the smart intelligent robot. All this and more on Gadgets and Gizmos. Domestic waste on the street, trade waste on the road, construction waste everywhere, biomedical waste, industrial waste, oof, too much waste man. Waste management is the need of the hour and technology should play a vital role in it. Why isn't anybody making an app for it man? Somebody should, right? If there's one thing that I've heard way too many times, it's people cribbing about how dirty our country actually is. If you look around, garbage chutes are overflowing. Now, today, we're actually meeting a startup called Pom Pom, which is doing something to salvage that situation. They're actually segregating garbage and recycling it. And the journey starts right from the household. Let's take a look. We now have an app which could actually solve most of our garbage disposal problems in the cleanest, most reusable, recyclable way possible. Pom Pom, a Delhi-based startup, has taken up the initiative of visiting your household and collecting your trash, including all your e-waste, via an app. The incentive behind starting this is we wanted to solve this problem of waste segregation at source. If you don't segregate waste at source, handling of waste management becomes very difficult and that's the crux of the entire problem that we're facing today. When it comes to smaller, let's say a household like me, and I have got a old charger which is not working, what do I do with it? Do I have a place to dispose it of properly? So we're trying to give the solution that while we're asking you to segregate all the waste that you have, you also segregate your e-waste that you have at home and we'll pick it up from you. Once we pick it up, we give it to an authorized recycler who would recycle it in an environment friendly manner. So if you're perplexed about those old blenders, cameras or chargers which you have no use for anymore or newspapers, bottles, plastics and glass which in normal circumstance would have just ended up on your nearby street, you now have an app with which you can book a pickup for your trash at a time of your convenience and once the time is fixed, Pom Pom will not only pay you a visit but also pay you for your trash. Pick up any of these e-waste or other material depending on the value we pay a cu customer a certain amount of incentive for him to make sure it's being separated and we can pick it up from them the person who is segregating he is also getting paid something for that so there is this incentive on both sides this is a very good opportunity pom pom has given where the waste is segregated it is transported properly and they go to their designated places where they have to go as per the government's new Solid Waste Management Rules 2016, waste generators must segregate their waste. We must segregate biodegradables, dry and hazardous waste, sanitary waste and e-waste before handing it over to the collector. Once segregated, recycling follows. Paper gets converted back to paper. Metals can be again converted back to metal. Uh, glass can be recycled n number of times back to glass. So with PET bottle, the PET, the, uh, PET fractions, once they get into recycling chain, there's polyester fiber that comes out of it and that is used as polyester in maybe shirts, jackets, shoes, whatever. But whatever you are generating, let it not go as a waste to the roadside. Give it to us, we are there to buy it. Whatever you generate has to be segregated and passed it on and recycled. That's the best way and the law also says that. Getting cash for your trash at the tap of an app? Not a bad proposition at all. So most of the bottles that you see here in a compressed form are going to be transformed into usable polyester shirts. That's how beautifully the system works. Now, if we can just learn to segregate our waste, dry waste separate, wet waste separate, e-waste separate and sanitary waste kept separately, it can actually keep our country cleaner and help save lives of millions of animals who lose their lives by eating trash from the overflowing garbage chutes.
So Samsung has finally launched their new Note, Note 7 successor to last year's Note 5. They decided to skip 6, but it doesn't matter. The phone of course is jam-packed with the latest hardware. It looks similar to the S7 which is great and uh, should be launched in India next week. Here is all that you need to know about the Note 7. After the success of Galaxy S7, Samsung has high hopes from the new Note 7. The new Note takes design inspiration from the S7 Edge as it offers dual curve Super AMOLED display with Quad HD resolution. The screen size is now 5.7 inches though. The curvature of the screen is different from the S7 Edge in that it allows for more flat surface area. The rear glass panel has an identical curve to the front making the whole phone more symmetrical than the S7 Edge. The rest of the hardware is as high-end as the screen. Depending on the market, Note 7 will be available with either quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 or with the octa-core Exynos 8890, a processor made by Samsung. In India, consumers are likely to see the Exynos version. The phone also has 4GB DDR4 RAM and 64GB of internal storage, which is a bump compared to the 32GB in the base variant of the Note 5. The phone also has a 4GB RAM and 64GB internal storage which is a bump compared to the 32GB in the base variant of the Note 5. The Galaxy Note 7 has the same camera that is doing the duty in the Samsung Galaxy S7. It has 12 megapixel image sensor with dual pixel technology for better and faster autofocus. Note 7 has a waterproof body even when the stylus is out of the slot. The new Note also comes with a bigger battery, 3500mAh compared to 3000mAh that is inside the Note 5. Besides the fingerprint scanner, the Note 7 also has a retina sensor which will help users unlock the phone with their gaze. The new Note 7 also comes along with a new Gear VR which will allow users to access virtual reality content through the smartphone. Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Well, you remember the film Wally? -E? Well, the film that showed us our future dystopian society that will be. Believe me, virtual reality and augmented reality, that's how they're going to shape our future. It's sad, but that's not the reason why I'm talking about the film. The reason why I'm talking about the film is because of those cute, intelligent robots, Wally -E and Eva. And we have another tiny robot which is equally intelligent it's called Cosmo and it's gonna change the way we look at robots trust me very neat take a look if Wally and Eva the Pixar characters ever got married and had a baby this is how the baby would look like Cosmo Cosmo is a tiny robot equipped with a powerful brain and an emotion engine, allowing it to create an evolving bond with its human yes. companions. The $180 robot reacts to your emotions and remembers the faces it's seen before. Communicating through complex facial expressions and its own unique language. The palm-sized robot is made up of more than 300 parts and the creators describe him as a charming, a bit mischievous and unpredictable. And despite the small stature, Cosmo is extremely intelligent. Cosmo scans his environment constantly and when he sees a face he knows, his eyes will light up in recognition. Cosmo is fully based on computer vision and deep learning. The robot sees the world through a single camera in its face hidden in a slot that's meant to look like a mouth. When put upon his charging dock, Cosmo goes to sleep, even snoring as he rests. Cosmo! Oh boy. Yes, Cosmo. 
With Cosmo's unique capabilities, researchers aim to bring the magic of robotic characters to life, creating a real platform that captures the sense of the lovable robots that are largely exclusive to films. The company plans to keep updating it so that you never run out of things to do with your crazy little robot. Because if you do get bored, Cosmo would be sad. Well, phone manufacturers are not only really looking at selling smartphones, they have all sorts of accessories that they are selling, be it power banks, headphones, Bluetooth speakers. Some companies have also launched smart pressure cookers and mosquito repellents, but yeah. Leiko, the big Chinese company, after the success of Le Smartphones, has decided to launch their television in India. And let's see how it looks. Chinese entertainment conglomerate Le Echo launched its LETV Super 3 range of smart television sets this week. The LETV Super 3 range essentially consists of three smart TVs that range from 55 to 65 inch screen sizes. These include the Super 3 X55, the Super 3 X65 and the flagship X65 Max. The Super 3 X65 and Super 3 X55 will approximately cost buyers Rs 1 lakh and Rs 60,000 respectively, while the Super 3 Max 65 has been approximately priced at Rs 1.5 lakhs, which will be available for buying from August 10th. From a uh, standpoint of processor and performance for all of these TVs, they're all top of the line in terms of uh, you know, processing speed as well as OS and as well as an integrated ecosystem. Cloud services, membership, content, all of that comes bundled with any of the TVs that, that you look at. If you compare that with comparable brands that exist today, there is a sizable difference in terms of value as well as uh, compared to price. The launch of the TVs follow Le Echo's ambitious expansion plans in India. The company recently broke its exclusive online retail policy by adopting offline retail channels as well. But would they be able to maintain their competitive prices offline? So offline I think allows us to reach a much larger number of users. Uh, especially for televisions I think it's very important because uh, they can actually touch it, feel it, experience it. It's a large buy. Offline would be a channel for us. So the pricing will remain the same. I don't think there's, there's no change in pricing. Right now for offline, we are looking at being present in multi-brand outlets. Uh, we have you know, chain stores, regional chain stores, national chain stores and independent outlets. also launched their Bluetooth speakers a couple of weeks back. We have them, they look good and are priced around 1999 rupees, somewhat similar to the Mi Bluetooth speaker. Are they any good? Let's find out. Bluetooth speaker category has become the second most populated category after the smartphone segment. Every company has tried to produce one but majority have failed to impress. Xiaomi had launched the Bluetooth speaker in March and we were impressed with its audio quality for the price at which it was sold. And now we have the LETV Bluetooth speaker here which is also similarly priced to the Xiaomi Bluetooth speaker. Talking about the design, it's a cylindrical design. It's just 6.7 inches tall and comes in four punchy colors. The small form factor means you can take it anywhere you please. Inside you have 1.57 inch and 1.85 inch driver units which will deliver sound in three directions. The speaker has one button control. Just one button to start the speaker and start the Bluetooth. There's a micro USB port for charging and that's about it. You can't control volume from the speaker or track and there's no aux port. These speakers are not meant for audiophiles, they are meant for casual listeners. For their size and price, these speakers produce good sound. You get some bass out of them, 
but mostly the sound is flat. It has good Bluetooth range and they are loud enough. You are still watching Gadgets and Gizmos. My name is Gaurav Preeti and it's time for a gaming segment now. Over to Rohit, man. He has the coolest job in the world. Whole week he plays games. There was something about those masterpieces. They left a deep impression on us that have yet to fade. I am Satsuna. I am Satsuna. Maybe Tokyo RPG Factory's first game as a development studio but its finesse and reverence of past JRPG hits makes it an absolute joy to experience. Your characters, their adventures. The story takes place in a snowy barren landscape that has been infested with monsters. When you first start out, you are introduced to one of the main characters along the journey, Endir, RPG is great. who is a swift swordsman from a tribe full of mercenaries. Later, as you progress, you come across Setsuna who needs to travel across the lands to rid all of the monsters through a ritual sacrifice. Throughout the journey, you will meet your typical JRPG stereotypes with support aid Setsuna as she progresses through her pilgrimage. If it sounds familiar, well, it's because Final Fantasy X had a similar story in which Yuna sacrificed herself to rid Sin, a ferocious monster that destroyed everything within its path. As soon as you start the game, you will quickly notice the simple and vibrant world created by Tokyo RPG Factory. With the polygonal simplicity and the detailed environment, it really gives the players a sense of mixed nostalgia, curiosity and anxiety to explore and keep playing. Throughout the majority of the game, you'll be in top-down camera angle, which makes it much easier on the eyes. Compared to a lot of modern games nowadays that can make you slightly nauseous. Now, Tokyo RPG Factory's intention wasn't to fully captivate their audience with aesthetics as there are other factors that really make this game stand out from the pack. Perhaps the biggest surprise among the many pleasant one that makes up I Am Satsuna is the gameplay, which is decidedly traditionalist yet never fails to be smart or engaging. Tokyo RPG Factory clearly did its homework in developing I Am Satsuna and it shows in the synthesis of its combat and character building systems. Combat in I Am Satsuna is to be frank almost exactly like the combat in Chrono Trigger that wowed the audience so long ago. Players can track down monsters on the map and either attack them from behind to gain an advantage or simply charge in with swords held high. The compact is heavily reliant on its momentum mode to freshen things up and change the textures of battle as the game progresses. Momentum mode is a character that players will charge either as they attack or are attacked or simply by waiting to input commands. And once charged, momentum allows gamers to trigger it by pressing a button at the right time to strengthen their assault on enemies. Players can also use momentum to make combo attacks with teammates even more devastating. Hansatsuna isn't without its drawbacks. There aren't many new ideas throughout the design. Even if the ideas it does take fit together like puzzle pieces. The game also doesn't require as much grinding as other JRPGs. Hansatsuna is a must-have for already enfranchised fans of the genre and a wonderful introduction to JRPGs for the uninitiated. I am Setsuna. All right, it's time for our tech roundup of the week in our tech news segment. Instagram has launched a new feature called Stories that strongly resembles Snapchat's section of the same name. The latest addition to the picture sharing social network lets users create ephemeral slideshows of photos, short videos and boomerang loops that just last for 24 hours. It is designed to let Instagram users show their followers what is happening behind the scenes of their well manicured feeds. Similar to Snapchat, the new section has a pen annotation tool, common Instagram filters and is only available in the mobile app. Oppo has launched its latest F1S smartphone in India. The F1S has been priced at 17,990 rupees and will be available to buy from August 11th. Its selfie expert smartphone comes with 16 megapixel front camera with f2.0 aperture. The phone carries a 13 megapixel rear camera and the F1 adds beautification software Beautify 4.0 to the camera app. Selfie expert Oppo camera phone F1S. 
Xiaomi has also launched its budget smartphone, the Redmi 3S in India. Just like the Redmi 2 Prime, the Redmi 3S is made in India smartphone and the price starts at 6,999 rupees for the base 2GB RAM and 16GB memory, whereas the Redmi 3S Prime is priced at 8,999 rupees for a high-end 3GB RAM and 32GB memory option. None of the Chinese company Lenovo has launched the Vibe K5 Note, successor to the K4 Note. The company hosted a media event in the national capital where it took the wraps of its new flagship phone. The Vibe K5 Note has been priced at 11,999 for 3 GB RAM and Rs 13,499 for the 4 GB RAM and is Flipkart exclusive. It will be available for buying for the first time on August 3rd in open sale. In addition, the company also launched a second phone, an upgraded version of Vibe K5 Plus perfectly balanced design you've always wanted. And Pokemons are tired of being caught and they are starting to fight back. Well, that's the concept behind a new video created to promote tourism in the Swiss city of Basel. Watch as a gang of Pikachu turn the tables on Pokemon Go players and attack them with an oversized Pokeball in a Pokemon Go Revenge. Sweet. Alright, so that's all we have for you in this week's episode of Gadgets and Gizmos. We hope you enjoyed watching the episode. You can always follow us on Twitter, give us your suggestions. And yeah, that's it. We'll be back next week with more of Gadgets and Gizmos.